<laughs> Hello, everyone. This video will go through the story of Assassin's Creed II Brotherhood and Revelation. Ezio, living in Italy during the Renaissance, is approximately 17 when he discovers that his family was betrayed by a close friend of his father's in the midst of a political coup d'etat. Ezio's father's final instruction lead him to a hidden room in the family home with a chest containing the clothing and weapons of an assassin. Ezio is ultimately unable to save his two brothers and father from the betrayer, and all three are falsely convicted of treason and hanged. After evacuating the home and sharing a brief accommodation with the family's housemate's sister, who teaches Ezio some survival techniques, he brings his panicked sister and mutant mother to the family's countryside villa, where they are given shelter by Ezio's uncle, Mario, who begins training Ezio to become an assassin. Mario also provides information and leads on the conspirators involved in his family's betrayal, which becomes a trail stretching from Florence to San Gimignano, Forlì, Venice, and eventually the Vatican. During his travels, Ezio befriends several citizens of Italy, who aid him in his pursuit for revenge, including a young Leonardo da Vinci, who translates and decodes page of Altair's Codex, enabling Ezio to gain new weapons and assassination skills. Ezio begins slowly locating and assassinating conspirators involved, and is ultimately able to identify Rodrigo Borgia as the Grand Master of the Italian Templars, whose main goal is to take control of all of Italy. Ezio tracks Rodrigo to Venice and discovers that he has obtained a piece of Eden known as the Apple, an artifact similar to the one that Altair possessed almost three centuries prior. Rodrigo has been researching the knowledge surrounding the pieces of Eden extensively, and believes himself to be a prophet named in the documentation of the artifacts, which would ultimately lead him and the other Templars to a location known as the Vault, which is believed to contain powerful information and more pieces of Eden. Ezio and Rodrigo duel, and when Ezio gains the upper hand, guards appear and begin to move the fight into the favor of Rodrigo. The allies that Ezio has made over the years arrive shortly after, and they defeat Rodrigo, who flees for fear of his life, leaving the apple behind. These allies and friends of Ezio finally reveal their common trait, that they are all members of the assassins, including the great Niccolo Machiavelli. They induct Ezio into the order, informing him that they believe him to be the actual prophet who will lead assassins, not Templars, to the vote. Years later, in 1499, Rodrigo regained influence and power in the Catholic Church, ultimately being elected Pope as Alexander VI. Ezio and his allies have searched long and hard, and collected all 30 pages of the Codex, discovering through it that the vault lies in Rome, specifically underneath the Vatican. They realize the papal staff is another piece of Eden, and Rodrigo is hoping to use it to achieve access to the vault. Ezio travel to the Vatican and attempt to assassinate Rodrigo, who uses the staff against Ezio, who retaliates with the apple. During the ensuing battle, Ezio is stabbed, and Rodrigo escapes with both pieces of Eden, Ezio then chases after him and finds Rodrigo trying to open the vault in vain. The two fight once more, and Rodrigo finally falls. However, Ezio refuses to kill him, insisting he has killed enough in his life, and the continued the death will not reverse the fate of his family. Ezio proves himself to be the prophet when in his hands, the apple and the staff open the vault. Inside the vault, he finds a holographic figure named Minerva, who claims that she and her race were part of an advanced society that settled on Earth before a celestial event destroyed most of the life on Earth, and they were the creator of human. As Ezio leaves the boat, after listening to Minerva's message, he discovers that Rodrigo is gone, his stuff left behind. Ezio attempts to extract it from the floor, however, it descends and is sealed away. Mero then calls down to him from the entrance, and he and Ezio fight their way out of the Vatican. Ezio, unable to decide whether or not to cast the apple into the Tiber River, gives it to Mario for safekeeping. The two then ride back to Monteregioni on horseback. However, Ezio soon learns that the Templar's threat has not diminished when Cesare Borgia, son of Rodrigo, lays siege on Monteregioni. Cesare's army of soldiers, towers, and cannons attack in full force, destroying much of the city and the villa. The attack ends with Montregioni in ruins, Ezio wounded badly by Arcbusia, and Mero killed by Cesare himself. Though Ezio attempts to follow his uncle's murderer on horseback, he passes out on a road to Rome from his injuries. Ezio regains consciousness in a small house in Rome, where the woman who has been tending to him tells him that a man has brought him there, 
and had supplied him with new armor and clothing. After leaving the house and receiving medicine from a doctor, Ezio leaves to meet with Niccolo Machiavelli. Through Machiavelli, he discovers that Rome is in disrepair and that the citizens are being oppressed by the Borgia. Basing himself on a tribal island in the center of the city, Ezio begins his mission to rid the city of the influence of Cesare and his generals. To do so, Ezio re-establishes relationships between his assassins and the other guilds in the city, the courtesans, the thieves, and the mercenaries. Ezio then begins to break down the Borgia influence in Rome by destroying several Borgia towers and their captains. He also sabotages Cesare's forces by striking at their arsenal, their military funding, and their support from the French forces. Afterwards, he is informed that Pietro Rossi, an actor and a plaything of Lucrezia Borgia, Rodrigo's daughter, possesses a key to the Castel San Angelo, where Cesare and Rodrigo locate. Ezio tells off the Corella, Cesare's personal assassin, who has been sent to kill Pietro. After Ezio has rescued him, both from being stabbed with a spear during his play and from the ailment of poison, Pietro hands the assassin the key to the Castel. Soon afterwards, Ezio infiltrates the Castel, where he witnesses the murder of Rodrigo by his son Cesare. Cesare forces the location of the Apple of Eden from Lucrezia and hurries to retrieve it from Basilica di San Pietro. However, Ezio successfully reaches the Apple before Cesare and subsequently uses it to demilitarize the remnants of Cesare's army. In one last battle, Ezio and his fellow assassins fight Cesare and his surviving men at the gates of Rome. Cesare is arrested by the order of the new pope, though not before commenting that he will not be in chain for long and that he will never be killed by any man. Sometime later, Ezio, troubled by Cesare's comments, discusses them with Leonardo da Vinci, who suggests using the apple to find out if what he said is true. Ezio takes his advice and discovers that Cesare indeed frees himself from prison. In 1507, Ezio finally tracks Cesare down at the siege of Viana, Spain. He fights through the infantry and finally managed to corner Cesare on a castle wall. There, in a climatic battle, Ezio managed to destroy Cesare's armor and ultimately defeat him. Though Cesare insists that he will not die in the hands of men, Ezio then leaves him to the hands of fate and throws him from the battlement to his death. Afterwards, Ezio takes the Apple of Eden into a boat under the Santa Maria era coily within the Temple of Juno. In 1511, four years after killing Cesare Borgia, Ezio traveled to the assassin's former fortress in Masyaf to learn more about the secrets. He finds Masyaf taken by Templars, who try to execute him. Ezio escapes and discovers the entrance to an underground library built by Altair, which requires five keys to unlock. The Templars have discovered one key underneath the Ottoman Sultan's palace, and the rest are hidden in Constantinople, capital of Ottoman Empire. Traveling there, Ezio is met by Yusuf Tazi, leader of the Turkish Assassin Order, and befriends the young student, Solomon. Ezio soon learns that the keys were hidden by Niccolo Polo and Miss Sofia Sata, an Italian traveler and collector. Ezio finds the keys with Sofia's help, while developing feelings for her. Meanwhile, Prince Ahmed and his brother Selim are quarreling over who will inherit the Sultanate. Solomon revealed to Ezio that he is Selim's son, and he suspects the Templars are behind the feud. Ezio uncovers evidence that Manuel Playo Logos, with Templar support, is attempting to raise an army to overthrow the Ottomans and re-establish the Byzantine Empire. Ezio travels to Cappadocia, kills Manuel, and recovers the final key, but discovers Ahmed is true mastermind behind the Templar plot to open Altair's library. During these events, Ezio uses the key to witness Altair's life after killing Al Mualin and assuming leadership of the assassins. One of the assassins, Avers, did not support Altair due to past events. When Altair and his wife, Maria, left Masyaf to fight off the Mongol invasion, Avers staged a coup, seizing control of the assassins and executing Altair's youngest son, Seth. Altair sought revenge. As Maria tried to stop him, another assassin killed her. Altair was forced to go into exile but eventually returned to Masyaf and killed Abers, retaking leadership of the assassins. Years later, Altai encodes his memory on the keys before entrusting them to Niccolo Polo. Returning to Constantinople, Ezio discovers that Amel has killed Yusuf and kidnapped Sophia, demanding the keys in exchange for her. Ezio agrees, but after saving Sophia, he pursues Amel and recovers the key. Before he can choose Amel's fate, Salim arrives, now the Sultan, 
and executes a mate. Due to Solomon's endorsement, Selim spares Ezio and tells him to leave Constantinople and never return. Ezio and Sophia return to Masyaf, where Ezio uses the key to unlock Al Tai's library. He finds it empty except for Al Tai's skeleton and a sixth key. Through the key, Ezio discovers that the library was a vault meant to house Al Tai's Apple of Eden, and Al Tai has sealed himself to protect it from Templars. Ezio leaves the apple there, stating that he has seen enough for one life, and retires from the assassins.